IRS TIN matching is a free service from the IRS that actually results in fewer errors, which means lower fines and penalties and less time spent responding to those odious, awful B notices. Yet many organizations still don't rely on this excellent service. Since most accounting and finance professionals continually look for ways to streamline processes, enhance accuracy, and ensure compliance, a good understanding of IRS TIN matching is critical. Make sure you stick around until the end when we share one situation that happens to many where proper use of tin matching will save the day. And sadly, not using it could cause you big trouble with the IRS. Let's make sure we're all on the same page and start with an explanation of what that service is. What is TIN matching? TIN, T-I-N, stands for Taxpayer Identification Number. The two TINs used most frequently in accounts payable are the Social Security Number, referred to often as SSN for individuals, and Employer Identification Numbers, referred to as EINs for businesses. TIN matching is a service provided by the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, that enables qualifying businesses to, ver to verify the accuracy of taxpayer identification numbers provided on various tax documents. And in the accounts payable space, we're usually talking about W-9. A qualifying entity is an entity that filed a 1099 in the prior year. And by the way, this is the system that the IRS uses to check your 1099s that you submit to make sure you have the correct name and TIN, i.e. that they match. Before we go further, I want to share to share that at least right now, you are legally not required to use TIN matching. It is optional. It just makes your life so much easier. Now, you may be wondering why we make such a big deal about TIN matching. What are some of the benefits of TIN matching? TIN matching benefit number one, greatly improved accuracy. Let's start off by mentioning uh, the ability to ensure the accuracy of the TINs provided by vendors, contractors, independent contractors, and other payees. By matching those TINs and their names against the IRS records, organizations can identify discrepancies or errors before they submit the 1099s. This reduces the likelihood of reporting incorrect information to the IRS, and it also mitigates potential penalties, and again, as I mentioned, those horrid B notices. TIN matching benefit number two, you have compliance assurance. Compliance with tax regulations is always important, and use of IRS TIN matching helps with that by verifying that the TINs provided on the documents match what the IRS shows on its records. This proactive approach minimizes the risk of you filing inaccuracies, and it also facilitates interactions with tax authorities during audits or inquiries. How much of a change will this, will this make, you ask? One of my readers shared that when her organization started using IRS TIN matching, they went from 200 B notices a year to four. Now, you might ask, why did they even get four? And the reason for this is because some of their suppliers had had what we call a change in circumstance during the year, which they didn't share. Now, it should be noted that there was no nefarious reasons behind this, that few organizations think to share this information with their customers. Not really because they're trying to hide something, they just don't think to share it. Tin, batch, tin matching benefit number three is risk mitigation. Incorrect tins can lead to various risks, penalties, rejected filings, and even possibly reputational damage, although that's a long shot. By implementing tin matching, organizations can mitigate these risks by detecting detecting and fixing errors before they become a bigger issue, i.e. B notices. Which brings me to TIN benefit matching. TIN matching benefit number four, fewer B notices. The B notices, as anyone who has ever had to deal with them, uh, have to be addressed. The IRS has very strict rules about how you have to address them, what you have to do, the record keeping. It's just not, not a pretty situation. So anything that you can do to reduce the number of B notices will make your accounts payable function more efficient or whatever organization uh, within your company that's handling the B notice is more efficient. It's it's something you have to do, but it's not a, certainly not a value-added task. Tin matching benefit number five is related, and it relates to operational efficiency. If you're going to manually try and validate the tins, this can be a time-consuming process and prone to human error. IRS tin matching automates this verification process and saves you invaluable time and resources. With faster turnaround time and reduced administrative burden, 
teams, accounts payable teams can focus on more value added tasks. Team matching benefit number six, you'll have vendor due diligence or you'll have done some vendor due diligence. And businesses often engage with numerous vendors and contractors um, who sometimes you don't know. And each requires accurate TINs for tax reporting purposes. So by using TIN matching, this enables you to conduct some due diligence and ensure that the information that the vendors provided regarding their, their legal name and their taxpayer identification are valid and consistent with uh, IRS records. Hopefully by this point, if you are not already signed up for IRS TIN matching, I have convinced you that you should. So how do you sign up for IRS TIN matching? First of all, you access online IRS e-services. To utilize IRS TIN matching, you must first register for IRS e-service, which is an online platform that provides access to various IRS tools and resources. Registration requires that you complete an online application, which typically includes providing personal or business information, verifying identity, and creating login credentials. This is where companies sometimes have a problem. The information required from the professional responsible for registering your company includes that individual's social security number and their adjusted gross income from their last year's tax return, sometimes referred to as their AGI. Now, I'm sure you can guess which of these in these items causes the problem. 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 Otherwise, intelligent professionals seem to lose it over this, often saying things like, I'm not giving the IRS that information. Well, newsflash, the IRS already has that information, assuming you're filing your tax returns. And I assume most people who are listening to this are. So you're not telling them anything they don't already know. They are simply using that information to verify that you are who you say you are, and you're not some criminal trying to impersonate you. Of course, when you explain this to the executive at your organization who is adamantly refusing to part with this information, you should probably be a little less snarky than I just was. Uh, you'll submit Form 4419, which is also known as on the IRS website, the application for filing information returns electronically. Once you're registered for IRS e-services, users can request access to IRS SIM TIN matching by uh, submitting this, this form 4419, or as we said, application for filing information returns electronically. This form serves as your formal request to participate in IRS TIN matching. And, and keep this in mind, this is important, must be submitted at least 45 days before the first intended use. So don't wait until the last minute to register. It might go faster, uh, but you can't count on it, especially at year end and the start of the new year when IRS is overloaded. So if you think you want to use it uh, for ne next year, for example, start now. There's no problem with um, registering early. Then you'll receive your TCC. Upon approval of 40, Form 4419, users will receive their transmitter code, control code, the TCC from the IRS. The TCC is a unique identifier assigned to authorized users uses and is required to access IRS TIN matching as well as other electronic filing services. When should you use TIN matching? You want to integrate the use of TIN matching into your accounts payable work process um, on a regular basis. With access to IRS TIN matching, users can integrate the service into their uh, new vendor setup workflows. This may involve using TIN matching software or solutions sometimes provided by third-party vendors um, that will facilitate seamless validation uh, with the IRS. It is a recommended best practice that supplier information be run through IRS TIN matching successfully before, can you hear me, before you make your first payment. If you wait until the end of the year, which some companies do, the process can be more difficult. If there is a mismatch and you have to go back to the vendor, you have lost your leverage to convince that vendor to provide corrected information, especially if you're no longer doing business with that vendor. This assumes, of course, that you can find the, the supplier, that they haven't moved or even worse, gone out of business. So better to do it before you make that first all-important payment when you still are in the driver's seat. I want to talk about another reason to use TIN matching and to do so religiously. If you are audited by the IRS for your information reporting returns, as about, by the way, 10% of APNAO members have been, it's likely that not everything will be perfect. 
script. I mean, let's face it, who does everything exactly the way they're supposed to? But if you've been religiously using IRS, rest, IRS tin matching, you can demonstrate that you had good intent to comply with IRS regulations and the audit is likely to go a little easier. There's also one last situation I want to talk about, one where use of the IRS tin matching might save your bacon. But before we get to that, if you're getting value from this talk, I'd love it if you'd hit the like or the uh, the like or the thumbs up button. It sends a message that you're getting value from this talk and I should make more like it. A personal thanks from, from me to everyone who has hit that like button. In some organizations, they only get a few B notices each year. B notices refers to that notice from the IRS telling you you have a name tin mat Mis name tin mismatch on one of the documents you file. The steps to correct it, as I said, are tedious and some say onerous. Because dealing with those B notices is such, such a pain, the fines in the scheme of things are relatively low. $260 per mismatch, I believe, at the time I'm putting this together. So some organizations will say, well, we only got a few of them. Let's just go ahead and pay the fine rather than hiring an attorney, doing the research, and hiring an attorney to write an abatement letter and or fight them. They figure this is cheaper and less time consuming. And in the little picture, they're right. But that is only looking at the little picture and those minor fines and penalties can come back to haunt you and haunt you big time. How? Let's say your organization has a full tax audit and the IRS decides that your company owes them a large amount of money in back taxes and penalties, whatever is a large amount for your company. So let's say several million dollars. Now, of course, it is worth the time and money to hire an attorney to uh, fight your dispute with the IRS. But guess what? You've established a pattern of non compliance with IRS guidelines because each year you had a non-compliance and you were paying those puny fines and your battle will be much harder if it is entertained at all. So use IRS tin matching and get every last one of those penalty notices resolved and abated because it'll pay off if you have this bigger problem. I've mentioned 1099 several times throughout this talk. That's because they're the main reason that accounts payable groups are collecting the tin the tins, taxpayer identification numbers, so they can issue accurate 1099s each year. But did you know there are several different types of 1099s? We think this issue is so important and it's important that you have a basic understanding of 1099s that we recently did a very introductory talk on them, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen if you're watching on YouTube and is in the description. Good luck.